We got another day, another strike. This time it's 75,000 of Kaiser Permanente healthcare employees out in California. I gotta say, look, I feel for these workers, okay? They're, they're not coming to work because they feel that the economic situation is dire. I'm in the same boat. The cost of living really stinks right now. But maybe instead of striking and trying to get your employer to pay you more money that they don't have, by the way, these unions should just stop supporting Democrats who are the reason the cost of living is as high as it is in the first place. That's why their workers can't afford to keep up with inflation. But I mean, hey, what do I know? This is the same problem that the auto workers are facing right now, which is you can demand anything you want. But if you don't, if these companies don't have the money to pay it, no demand matters. Kaiser is not giving us sufficient staff. We're asking for better pay. We're asking for better staffing. We're asking for improvements in our day-to-day -day, uh, struggles that we, that we go through at work. We need our patients to be safe. We need our health care workers to be paid fair to uh, catch up with inflation. All of us need to have a higher um, pay raise. Here's an idea. I, I said it before. Stop supporting Democrats. They cause these problems. Well, joining me now to discuss former HUD secretary and professor of Emeritus at John Hopkins University and School of Medicine, Dr. Ben Carson. Uh, doctor, through all this stuff, people still don't get it in the medical field that the money is not there. And if they do provide the money for these striking people, who I feel for, then that you have to take that away from care and facilities, no? Yeah, well, I, I feel for the people, too. There's no question that they need more money. But why do they need more money? because we have policies in place that have driven the prices of everything up. This is all unnecessary. These are self-inflicted wounds, you know, with our energy policies that sort of started the whole thing and then it becomes a spiral and just keeps going. And uh, of course, the people are caught in the middle, uh, be they in the health professions, be they in uh, auto production, whatever it is, they're, they're all the ones who are gonna get caught and they're gonna be squeezed. And they're going to start asking for more money. And then if they get more money, the inflation is going to continue to spiral even more so out of control. What we need is some intelligent leadership. Yeah. People who actually understand economics. Right. But but that's the bigger problem, especially, I mean, you know, the healthcare industry, you know, you were the one of the most foremost brain surgeons in the world. If these people want to strike there, hey, look, I don't I know most of these people are, are staffers. They're not actual uh, doctors and nurses, but they are they, they are the people that make the wheels turn. MRIs, appointments, um, the way the function, everything in these hospitals function. If they're out. And they're talking, they're standing there on the, on the street corner saying, well, hey, this is about the health and safety of our patients. Y you're skipping three, four, five days of cancer screenings. What does that do for patients? Uh, obviously, it's a, a terrible situation for patients. And uh, it's going to continue to get worse mm -hmm. unless we actually deal with what's going on. What do you need for good health care? Mm -hmm. You need a patient and you need a health care provider. Along came the middleman to facilitate the relationship. It's now the major uh, component and uh, directs the other two components in terms of what they should be doing. Uh, we should let the market determine how we do health care rather than the government to do that. And that's, that's why some of the Marxists have said the linchpin to socialism yeah. is health care. Right. No, I agree. It's one sixth of the U.S. economy. But Sean Fain, the president of the United Auto Workers Union, another one who's striking, who's he, they're leading the charge on this thing, saying, quote, billionaires, in my opinion, don't have the right to exist. Uh, doctor, OK, so all the billionaires take their money, they pack it up, they divest from these companies and they say, fine, have no jobs. I'm going to take my private jet and enjoy my life. It won't only be the jobs. It'll be the stadiums, all the entertainment things that they enjoy. Uh, television, you know, we become like a third world country. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with having rich people uh, as long as everybody has the opportunity to become one of those rich people. And that's one of the things that has distinguished America from so many other places. And we've done a very good job of it. When you look at the inventions that have had uh, life-changing implications for society over the last 150 years, look how many have come from this country. Correct. Because we had a system that encouraged entrepreneurship and innovation, and we paid people for it. Yeah. 
Well, and we have over, I think it's 90% of medical innovations come from America, not anywhere else. Dr. Ben Carson, right. always a pleasure, sir. Thank you.